Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor. Uh, I have uh, been doing this for over 40 years and now that I am semi-retired or close to being fully retired, I am publicizing a lot of my thinking about certain things. At the moment here we're going to talk about compasses. Uh, here I have made up a kind of a compass arrangement where I can uh, talk to people about how to use a compass. Now I really find it amusing to see a 200-page book on how to use a compass where probably 10, 20, 30 pages maybe might, might do. And I want to uh, discuss a little as to uh, what I think a compass uh, 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 does for you. The situation here is that we have a north-facing needle Usually they're red, and the south-facing needle, south-pointing needle, is usually black. Well, people are even confused in the situation of uh, um, knowing, remembering which is which. So some people are helpful, and they put a little N in the right place so that you don't go uh, exactly opposite in the direction you want to go. Now the needle swings around and tries to point at the uh, the, the north pole, but the north pole. Um, is about 1,500 miles, uh, I think it's miles, not kilometers, uh, further north than the magnetic pole. And so if you're not lined up with the two, your needle doesn't exactly point north. So for me to orient this, I will want it to point at a special degree, which around here is 22 and a half degrees. So I will make a, a diamond here, like that. And you have put that on your compass. So if I had a compass like this, I would look to see where north is, and at 22 and a half degrees, I would, in my area, I would mark it or etch it, and my compass is ready to use this way. So you've got to know what is known as the declination. That is, the difference there is in your locale between actual north and where the compass needle points. If you're around the south of Lake Winnipeg, you'd be pointing straight north, so you would have no declination. And so your compass would always operate like this. Well, if you're using a map, you take and draw light lines across your map at that angle of 23 degrees. So you go like so, and you make these light pencil marks so you don't ruin your map. And when you use your compass with the map, that helps you to transfer the bearings, the directions, off of your map into you using them. So here, for example, let's say I want to go south. And the wind is... I want to go south. So I hold south right opposite my body, learning to keep it as square as possible. And then I turn... As I turn, that... Um, say I, I start over here, this is east. And as I turn, the needle will swing around until when I see the needle pointing directly at the declination, I am now oriented south. So you pick whatever angle you want. And if I, I would start again then saying, first of all, draw lines across your map. That's sentence number one. Number two, mark the compass at the declination so that you can point the north needle at it. Hold the compass squarely in front of the body and keep the compass level and square in front of the body and rotate until the needle is pointing at the declination. That's about probably 95% of what you need to know to use a compass. And what I explained here, you must do flawlessly and you become a very respected navigator in the, for in the forest. So that's what all these compasses that I have here, I want them to do this. So I prefer the compass that swings as a needle by itself. And I don't really like the compasses that have a disc to them, of which there are a variety, but I usually don't have any uh, near me sort of thing because I don't use uh, compasses that way if I can help it. The disc, of which we got these little compasses, it seems like the people who make them somehow feel uh, the uh, disc balances better or whatever. So this is a little compass here that you can't really effectively use that mark on the edge because the whole compass card, the whole compass phase with the degrees, moves with the needle. 
And that really confuses things. Maybe this one is larger here, for example. So it's the whole, the whole disk is moving and you have to subtract in your mind uh, generally to make it fast. So you've got to do all this mathematics and very often error creeps in. So if I was teaching grade threes, I would be giving them simple compasses. As a matter of fact, I can order this type of compass right there a gross, which is 144 compasses for, I think, about $1.50 or something at one time. So I used to buy these by the bag full and give every kid one, and I would teach them these five steps on how to use the compass. And this is sufficient for you to navigate in survival purposes. If you're a surveyor, this is the compass you use, and you can see that the compass face is much larger. And this is made out of Bakelite plastic, so it's probably older than me. I actually uh, didn't have to use a compass very much as a surveyor, but in the days that they did, this was probably the, the um, um, uh, state-of-the-art compass. And it was used with shiny plastic in the same way that a modern accurate compass. So if you're in the military, you want to have some pretty accurate um, um, navigational means. So here, by having your lid properly, you can look and, or here you can actually even look and line up with a pin here and there. It's a long thing and you're looking and looking till you got lined up and you steadily wait for the compass and you push down with your finger like that and that keeps the needle from moving and then at your leisure you read the angle very precisely. These here you read the angle directly because the mirror is tilted and you're looking at the compass in the, in, in the uh, mirror. Now this mirror here, some people say, oh, I don't bring a signal mirror because I have my compass mirror. This mirror is made out of plastic, and I'll warn you that uh, uh, it does not function very well because it's made out of plastic. But we'll talk about signal mirrors next, or uh, some other or, or, or video. But anyway, we have these many different compasses. Uh, the first one that I ever used was this one, because Tom Roycroft gave me my first compass. I really hadn't used compasses and this is the standard compass that is packed in the uh, um, and you know this one is old because it's made out of brass the more modern equivalent is made out of plastic and in down but not out and a variety of other uh, articles you will see that this compass is uh, uh, housed in a very durable way to protect it. it the mirror now falls down underneath and you read your bearings from the bottom the uh, uh, plastic one, I'll just check, it'll be shinier because it hasn't seen so many years of service. Exactly the same, but the same principle of reading accurately. Sight along the top, you've got a very accurate way of, of, uh, uh, of sighting and a very accurate way of reading the compass from underneath. Now, in orienteering, the compass looks more like this. And this one is so old that uh, it doesn't have the see-through plastic, but it's the very first compass I used. And you've got a, <coughs> a, um, a plastic base that's got figures and everything that acts like a protractor. This is a form of protractor that I, I sort of like. And you turn your angles off and you can read them very directly. And so as a survival instructor, I acquired this particular compass three days wages, a silver compass that I, that I think cost probably some close to $70, $75. Today, in Dollarama, for $2 I get a compass that looks very much like this and I was so intrigued that for $2 I discovered this was just as good as this <laughs> three days wages you paid for a compass. There are a lot of people there that you have to feed and support everything in the silver compass system and so on. So you get the, the compass for $2 at Dollarama and to all intents and purposes all the features that this compass has for $2 are totally adequate for working with kids. Why not? Focus on that compass as sophisticated as it is, and it might even have features that the other one doesn't have. Another compass, if we're going to talk about cheapness, is this one at Fields, which I love because it's got the needle that isn't a card, and it's one dollar. That's a dollar compass. Of course, this compass here, that was probably a hundred for a dollar, but 
this year there's no excuse that every kid in the outdoor education system in Canada shouldn't know how to use a compass. <coughs> now there are various compasses you can get. These little ones, some of them are very costly. There's a compass here I think that's probably $15 for one and it was meant to put in the stock of your rifle so you uh, uh, drill a hole of a certain size and glue that in and on and on. So there are many kinds of compasses that you will find uh, in, in the circumstance. But if you stick with the needle type compass, you will find that you can be quite accurate and not have to do any mental arithmetic. Now here I've got a peculiar device <coughs> where the compass caught my eye. Uh, it's a marriage between the two, the disc and, and the needle you might say. Uh, this happens to be a flashlight, this happens to be a magnifier, <laughs> and not only that but there's a pen here, sort of a something that you might find, oh the wind, let the wind blow things away. Uh, but anyway, I look at this compass, and I say I haven't seen that type of compass before, it must be Chinese, in that the disc is made out of plastic so you can see through it. And the markings, the other markings that you need are underneath it. You can see through the clear disc. Now, now I'm starting to think that's about the best of both worlds, you might say. So anyway, um, usually I'll buy objects like this, pop the compass out, and then I, I buy it for the compass because there are many things that seem to have a compass constructed in there. But at any rate, take a simple compass, perhaps about that big, relatively inexpensive, or let's talk about this one. Put the mark on there where you scratch or you put a mark on there at the uh, um, the declination, which is 23 and a half degrees I think right here, and then your compass is ready to use. Let's say I want to go east. I um, hold the compass squarely in front of my body and I turn until the needle points at the declination. And I got to hold east opposite from my body, turn my body until the compass is pointing at the declination and that's east. 90% of what there is to use a compass.